Blessed day to every one of you under the sound of my voice. This is the day the Lord has made, and um, He's asked us to rejoice and to be glad in it. Hello there. This is Faith Moment, a platform where we study the Word of God to increase in our every area of our life by the understanding of what God has given to us. And so, um, just if you are joining me wherever you are, Please do me a favor, tag your friends, your loved ones, your neighbors, invite somebody, and um, let's come together to understand the word of God to increase. All right, let's have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you again for this blessed day. This blessed day. We thank you, O oh God. Father, I yield myself to you to bring your word to your people for their increase and our increase. Nothing of me, O oh God, everything of you. Spirit of the living God, take over and bless your people. Satan, take your hands off God's people so that they can live to fulfill the purpose for which we have been born to the glory of God's name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beloved, this is Friday. Friday, the day to put it all together. All right? And uh, I'm talking about the uh, the three dimensions or the three graces of the Holy Spirit. The three graces of the Holy Spirit. And um, this week we started this series uh, in from the faith area, came down to hope, and now to love. Yesterday we started we started the um, <clears throat> the topic of love. And uh, why it's important to see that um, love radiates out of the Holy Spirit. Love is part of the three eternal, eternal qualities of the Spirit. Love is one of the eternal qualities of the Holy Spirit. And we've been dealing with the Holy Spirit and the importance of the Holy Spirit and why the Holy Spirit is with us and why we cannot ignore the Holy Spirit. Uh, we cannot just not ignore the Holy Spirit. We cannot grieve Him and uh, we cannot upset Him as well because He's our helper. The Holy Spirit is here to help us in every area of our lives. So uh, you don't want to mess up with the, with the helper because He's the one who is here to help us in very, every area of our lives where we can help ourselves. Unless you don't need him, that, that's up to you. But, uh, beloved, trust me, you will need the Holy Spirit. And also for those of you who do not know about the Holy Spirit or have not yet embraced him, beloved, you have the opportunity to do that. Why? Because he is here and given as promise for each and every one of us. All right? I often say that in the old dispensation, in the old law, in the Old Covenant, the Holy Spirit was assigned to only some selected, specific people. Selected. Selected. Go, go and, check, and check it out. Selected in the Old Testament was selected people that um, God assigned or sent the Holy Spirit to uh, assist them to do specific things. All right? Where God was concerned. Now, to God be the glory, um, Jesus came to help us in what we could not handle. And um, as a result of his departure back to the Father, he promised to send us the Holy Spirit that came upon him uh, when he was baptized to start his ministry and did all that he could do that the disciples with him could not do. All right? And you and I couldn't do it either. But now the Holy Spirit has come. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us. He's a helper. He's our advocate. He's our he's our paraclete. He's our our comforter, uh, our our keeper, our teacher. Put it all together. That's who the Holy Spirit is. Our helper. All right. And so we cannot ignore the Holy Spirit, beloved. Um, as much as the world do not know the Holy Spirit, it's so essential and important in your life as a child of God and a believer to know who the Holy Spirit is. All right, Jesus says the world do not know the Holy Spirit. They can, they, the world cannot receive him because they, they don't know him. All right, now you know him. And I believe Jesus said you know him because you've heard of him. 
but do you have an experience with him? Do you have a personal encounter with him? It's one thing to know of something. It's another thing to know that thing yourself or whatever or that person. All right. Some, that is why sometimes I question people who uh, will be talking about somebody as though they know that individual. And my question is, do you know him? You know, you are talking as though you know him. Do you really know him or you know of him based on what you have heard? Beloved, this is um, an avenue that, you know, puts you in a wrong path for you to know of somebody and talk about that person as though you know him. And so we got to be very careful because if you don't know him for yourself, have a personal relationship with him and you talk like you know him based based on the fact that you know of him then you 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 tread on the wrong path are you listening um some people thought they know i mean they heard of the holy spirit okay or they even saw the demonstration of his power and uh, they thought that, uh, oh, wow, that's an interesting thing. That's an attractive thing. Let me, let me buy some. Let me buy, you know. And, and we see in the scripture where um, um, uh, a sorcerer, a sorcerer, okay, uh, necromantis and or oh, a demon operator um, came to um, and Peter and want to offer money to buy the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Well, if, if the Holy Spirit was not attractive, I, I guess, you know, he wouldn't have even bothered himself with. All right. And so uh, um, he wanted to, he doesn't know the Holy Spirit, but because of the, the kind of work he does, okay, by using other demonic spirits to operate, okay, in the, in the life of the people, um, he thought that, well, this is interesting. Let me also get some. Let me buy some and then use it, you know, um, to, um, to operate. And so, and so it's one thing to know the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to know of Him. And so um, check yourself, uh, all right? Check yourself and, and find out whether you know Him or you know of Him. It's, it's very important. Now, um, uh, today... Uh, coming to you with this, just the um, uh, this um, uh, Facebook uh, window alone today, because yesterday we encountered some challenges with the um, uh, the internet and the, the um, this software that we've been talking about, and so we're working on it to try to make it good. All right, make it good so that uh, I believe that it's. I mean, we are living in inf information world. You got to have all the information uh, that you need to help you. Uh, and to help ourselves, so uh, we're gonna we we we're putting it together, make it good, and so that uh, hopefully by um, next week, sometime or soon, uh, we should be back on. Because yesterday, uh, and let me apologize for uh, some of you who are having troubles in um, uh, you know getting the sound of what I was saying and things like that. Okay, now I, I believe you understand that, especially those of you. Who, you know, God has been so good to you. Now you are no, no longer, you know, uh, living under off and on electricity in your house. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so uh, let's 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 uh, have some fun, all right? Um, but in all that getting, you need to get understanding. Understanding of what? Understanding of the Word of God. Um, the Word of God will, is 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 very powerful, very very strong. And uh, our inability, okay, our inability to understand the word of God gives the devil the upper hand uh, concerning us. And he doesn't use it on the people who are under his uh, under his uh, his list. He only comes after you and I. And um, in if we don't understand the word, and also be able to to dis to you know dissect the word in its proper context then um you know he takes advantage of our ignorance and so beloved we need to study the word i, I believe listen i've come to the place i'm not um so much interested in preaching you know to um, let you get excited and 
all those good stuff and yet you lack nothing you have nothing i mean your foundation is still is still is still you know weak all right and then you know you'll be hollering and you know all over the place and i'm telling you it's it's it, it's not good it's really not good so um you know get yourself seriously in studying the word listen you don't have to go all over just keeping your head in the air for all day without doing anything even if it's just one sentence okay of the word of god that you will spend your some time on and meditate on it and allow the holy spirit okay allow the holy spirit to to help you understand it are you listening it's very very important whichever area or circumstances you may find yourself in all right if that's one sentence of the word of god i'm telling you it will it will carry you long, a long way than even trying to um, you know impress your own self by trying to get into the word and reading a whole lot of stuff and, and stuff and yet you don't have nothing to hold on so um when it comes to studying the word you can't rush you cannot rush it and this is where it's important for you all right it's very important for you to understand who the holy spirit is and 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 the 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 his assignment okay and that is to help you and me even even understanding the word of god why in 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 uh, first corinthians chapter chapter 2 verse 6 down read it down i believe we'll get to the seventh or eighth verse it says that even the holy spirit or i, I think that verse 9 it says only the holy spirit knows the things of god and even the deep things of god the deep things of god so when it comes to when it comes to understanding the word of god you need the help of the holy spirit yes beloved you need that how do you how do you understand what you can you don't connect with huh how do you understand what you, you don't connect with so it's very important that um, we we have this understanding and this is why um I, I usually quote you my one of my favorite scriptures and uh listen i just told you that when you can even get one sentence and stick with it listen when i got hold of proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 it, it took me a long time because it hit me that when I read that, I remember that very day, um, it was one Sunday afternoon, and it's like, man, wisdom. Because, you know, I mean, I, I, I always ask God, Lord, give me wisdom, you know, and, and in several areas of my life, whatever I, I find myself doing, give me wisdom in it. And, um, but then I read the, the, the final sentence of you know of that scripture and it says in all thy getting get understanding whoa that that stood out i mean that sentence that stood out to me was staring right in my face for a long time so like, hmm, get understanding get understanding and then i and then once i had studied the scriptures i realized that when it comes to you know wisdom you know we all know or most of us know that uh, scripture says that uh, Solomon asked God for wisdom. All right, when he became the king, that he so that he he would know how to rule the people and all that. But then Scripture says, if you if you read continue down there, it says, and God added exceeding understanding to him. God added. He didn't ask for understanding. He asked for wisdom. But God added exceeding understanding to him so it it, it brought you know a, a, a revolution it revolutionized my my thinking that wait a minute i need more of understanding i need understanding so he says in all that getting get understanding so in other words whatever i'm looking for or whatever i want to achieve if i don't have understanding in it it's not going to bless me and this is why i quote that you know, um, uh, I made that statement that whatever you don't understand cannot bless you. Whatever you don't understand cannot bless you. How, how is it going to bless you if you don't understand 
what it is, what you have. How can it bless you? Are you understanding? So it's very, very important for us to understand who the Holy Spirit is. First of all, to know Him. All right? To know Him. Beloved, I believe that if we really take our time, all right, and not be, this is why I'm saying that for this race, this particular race, life is a race. Oh, yeah, whichever way you look at it. It's some kind of, you will see some kind of race in it. Because, I mean, everybody, I mean, look at you got up in the morning, every, most people, I mean, just about most people. I would say at least about 90, 80, 90% 90 people. Everybody's rushing, you know, look, I mean, look on your highways. Cars are moving, you know, you know, and look in the air. Planes are moving. The trains, they're moving. Everybody's moving. Everybody, I mean, everybody's moving. To do what? To achieve. Everybody want to achieve something. Are you listening? We all want to achieve things. So we're going here and you driving here and everybody's driving and, you know, people are moving here and then on. Why? It's, a, it's some kind of a race. You are racing to achieve, all right, what you have set your mind on. If not, just if you don't think it's some kind of race in whatever you are doing, well, think, I just revealed that to you, all right? But this particular race of the Christian life or the Christian walk, all right, it's not for the swift, the Bible says. It's not for the, the, the ones who thought that, uh, well, they, they are smart, they can get these things quick and that kind of stuff, beloved. No, you have to come to that, this place to understand that this particular race is not for the swift. Are you listening? This particular one here, I don't, I'm not talking about any other race. This particular one, it's not. And so you need to take your time um, to understand the word and be seasoned. Beloved, it all has to do with foundation. Proverbs, I mean, Psalms chapter 3 verse 11 says that, um, is it 3, 11 or 11? 3? <laughs> I believe that sometimes I'm telling you, you, you're so excited that you just, you know, to make, mm, put it all together, all right? Now, I think Psalms chapter, let, let's go there. Psalms chapter um, 3 verse 11. Let's read something here. Let's read something. And that it says that, um, if the foundation is destroyed, what can you, the righteous, do? So go with me now to Psalms chapter 3. Okay. Psalms chapter 3. Um, <clears throat> no, there you go. You see, that's why right. Psalms 11. Psalms 11 verse 3. Psalms 11 verse 3. It's if the foundation are destroyed, what can the righteous do? It's a question mark there. Psalms 11 verse 3. If the foundation, if your foundation, beloved, is destroyed, what can you do? You, the righteousness of God. I'm speaking to those who are the righteousness of God. All right? You have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All right? Baptized uh, in water, immersed in water. Well, now you have to think of getting your baptism in the Holy Spirit if you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, but if your foundation is destroyed, so this is about a foundation, all right? It's, it's, it's solidifying your foundation, okay, in your walk with God as a spiritual being so that um, um, you, 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 know, you don't cave in with, with situation and circumstances that, that you face in this world are you listening it's very important very very important and so let us let us um, get this in here okay so now back to um, our uh, subject of the week our series of the week now we are in the area of love the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is love listen we yesterday where I was talking about the fact that how do you say you love or you have the love of God uh, in your heart and um, um, doing the work of God, but yet, you know, trying to pull down another servant of God, doing the same work of God. I mean, how is that possible? How that Jesus said the other day is that a kingdom that fights itself cannot stand. Cannot stand. Think about it. Whoever, it, you know, it, it, you are, if you are doing anything of such, think about it. That do you want the kingdom of God to stand or you are assigned to, co to, to collapse the kingdom of God. Because 
if, if this is what, you know, is done in the kingdom of God, it's not going to stand. I'm fighting you. You are fighting me. How in the same thing, in the same field, how is it going to stand? How is it going to stand? And therefore then, how do we fight the, the common enemy that you and I have? How do we fight them? And so we, we need to renew our mind and, and, and start thinking, you know, uh, very rational. All right. Okay. Now, uh, we, we, um, we spoke about the fact that uh, love is the closest, closest. Love is the closest we can, we can become God or we can be, be like God. Okay. Why? Because God is love. Because God is love. And love is the closest that you and I can come closer of becoming or being like God. Why? Because God is love. I mean, he, that is, he's, he's love himself. Are you listening? I'll say, okay, so um, we need to do that. And um, as, uh, First John, First John chapter 4, verse 8, First John chapter 4, verse 8 says that he who does not love does not know God. He who does not love does not know God. Why? For God is love. For God is love. And we also spoke out in, um, of the fact that uh, love is the first commandment. Jesus spoke that the first commandment is love and love of God. We got to love God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind. All, okay, we got to love God. Love God. And that's the first and continuation of that. Okay. And the second part of it, to love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you, you love yourself. Are you listening to me? You love your neighbor as you love you love yourself. So, uh, Mark chapter 12, uh, we read from the 30th to the 31st verse. We also came down to the fact that it's necessary for um, for all our, of our duties as children of God to be centered on Christ, on Christ's love. Okay? It's very, very important that we saw that in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, uh, the first to the third verse. Okay? And then I believe we came to the fact that love also inspired, inspires um, uh, of God's love. We are inspired. Love inspires of, inspires us to demonstrate, uh, okay, the love of God in us. Because what is in us is what will come out. What's in us is what comes out. Like Peter, Peter, Peter said to uh, uh, to the guy, this this lame guy, um, who's been begging for money and all that. He says, I, I, "What you are asking of me, I don't have. But such as I have." such as I have, give thy eye unto thee, such as I have. Whatever you have is what you're going to give. So if love is in you, love is going to radiate out. Are you listening to me? That's what is going to come out. And uh, uh, 1 John 4 verse 19, we saw that. Okay, so now today we want to continue and that I want to take you to the fact that um, um, love also proves our discipleship. Love also proves our discipleship. If we are saying we are disciples of God, then we should demonstrate the love of God in us. We should demonstrate in the listen in the first church, in the early church, that's I call the early church, that is what kept them going. In the early church, that is what kept them going. I mean, the, the it, I mean the, they were they were so much together. All right, out of love, the spirit of love, the spirit of truth was in them. It, it makes you question, you know, these days is, a, is the spirit of truth in the, the, the believers? Or he, he, he hasn't left because he's, Jesus says he will be with us forever. So he, has not, he hasn't left. We may have left him, but he hasn't left. So the early church, we saw the demonstration. I mean, where where we they were they were even uh, selling their properties and bringing the proceeds, okay, together so that the the the, uh, the disciples, the apostles will, will will receive it and and share it so that every so that there's no lack. There is no lack because why? Lack is not of God, beloved. Lack is 
is is is not good. Lack is not good. Lack of anything. <laughs> Just fill in the blanks. Lack of anything is not. It's not good. All right. And so this they did so that there will be no lack. There will be no lack. The Bible says there will be no lack. If you go to uh, let's let's look at some scriptures. Um, all right. Um, John chapter 13, John 13 and the 35th verse, John, the book of John, all right, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John 13, 35, go with me there, Matt, John, John 13, 35, John chapter 13, all right, look at 35, <clears throat> all right, look at 35, as a matter of fact, let's, let's take one step back, and read from the 34th verse, John. Look at John chapter 13. All right, watch this now. Watch this. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Can I, can I, can we read it from actually from the 31st um, verse? 31st verse, yes. All right. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, when he had gone out, Jesus said, watch this. Now, Jesus is speaking. Now, the Son of Man is glorified. And God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Verse 33, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me and as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, Verse 34, watch the 34 now. A new commandment, underline a new commandment. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Okay? Verse 35 is our point. Watch this now. It says, by this, by loving one another, by this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. If you want, I mean, for the world to know, for the people to know, for everybody to know that we are the disciples of God, we should demonstrate that love to one another. But, so, see, don't complain. I mean, stop complaining and then people are, are speaking evil against the church and, and people are, I don't want to go to church and, uh, you know, the church people are hypocrites. That, that, well, that's, that's what we exact. That's what is that. That is what is demonstrated. That is what is because a pastor is standing in the pulpit and condemning another pastor. A pastor is standing in the pulpit telling the church people don't go to that church, don't go to this pleasant church, don't go to that one. He did that, 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 as though you are God. You you are God who called yourself and you call everybody else. I mean, how when you do that? How are you demonstrating the discipleship spirit of God in you? How are you doing that? You tell me. And Jesus, this is, this is, this is from Jesus, our master, the one who, whom we have come to be called Christians. Christian is a, a Christ follower. Okay? So if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. He's your all in all, your master and everything. He's your Lord. Then you are a Christian. Now, if you are a Christian, then this is what your master is saying. That by this, first of all, let me take it from verse 34 again. A new commandment I, Jesus, I'm giving you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love um, uh, one another. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love. Now, if you go to the commandments, the, the, the um, uh, take the Ten Commandments, you will see this there also. You will see this there. So this is, this is like Jesus says in, um, 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 in, the, um, in John, I believe in John, let me see something. I believe in John chapter 5, go with me a little. Look quickly, I want to see something here. John chapter 5. John the 5th chapter. Um, let me see something. I believe, is it? 
No, no, John the 14th chapter. John the 14th chapter, okay? Yeah, yeah, John the 14th chapter. John the 14th chapter. Now look at uh, uh, verse 15. Look, listen to Jesus. He says, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. And the commandment Jesus is talking about here, okay, the commandment Jesus is talking about here is for you to love one another as he has loved you. If you said you were a disciple of Jesus Christ, so what is this thing about you condemning another person in, in, in the pulpit and in the church? Okay. What, 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 where is that coming from? Is that a spirit of God? Is that, is that what Jesus said? So if not, if, if this is not what Jesus says, then why are, we, why are you doing what Jesus has, has not said? And he says, if you love me, you see what Jesus said? That? He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. So now ask yourself, in what you are doing, do you love Jesus? The one that you, you, you claim he has called you to be a pastor in the pulpit, that you are standing in the pulpit and condemning the other person and uh, ask him, ask yourself. Just ask yourself, do you love him? Hmm? Ask yourself. Oh my goodness. So John chapter 13 again, look at um, verse 34. So a new commandment, he says, I give to you that you love one another. We're talking about love. And this how, this is, um, this is the third grace of the Holy Spirit. The third grace of the Holy Spirit. A new commandment, Jesus says, I give, I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this, by this, let us conclude this. It says, by this, all who know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, if you have love for one another, beloved, and so <clears throat> I, I, it uh, on, on on almost I'm almost there in questioning if the Holy Spirit is even in you, because the Holy Spirit exacts love, which is one of the the graces of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit exacts love. It, 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 it the Holy Spirit radiates love. And so, listen, I'm telling you, oh my goodness, this is, this is serious. So if the Holy Spirit is in you, well then let's see the love of Christ that is in the Holy Spirit that is living in you. Is it, eh? Is, is that simple? Is that all right? I, I think that should be okay. Let's see it. Let's see it. Okay? Now, so by so doing, by so doing, Jesus says, everyone will know that you are a disciple of him. So now think about it. This is something for you to think about. All right? <laughs> uh, so that will prove your discipleship. In other words, prove your discipleship. Okay? Prove your discipleship by John 13. 35. Prove your discipleship. Prove it. Prove it. Uh, look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Let's see something here. 1 John chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 7. I hope, I hope you are learning something, all right? 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Look at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows Him. Ooh. Knows Him. Ah, a question is coming. Do you know love? Do you know God? <laughs> Do you know God? Look at it. First John chapter four, verse seven. First John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, beloved, 
Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Hmm. He who, verse 8, <laughs> he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh oh, he who does not love does not know God. Hmm. Uh oh, did I say that? <laughs> ah, beloved, this is this is. You see how how we need to take our time and study the word. Take our time and study the word. He who does not love does not know God. So why are you saying you know God? Mm. I remember when I was in, um, hmm, I think one of my day, day, daycare or kindergarten teachings, one of uh, the songs that uh, was taught to us and I've never forgotten. And uh, it goes like, you, um, you will never know God as a perfect father unless you love him as you love your own brother. You will never know God. As a perfect father, unless you love everyone. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You will never know God. As a perfect father, unless you love him as you love your own brother or sister, you will never know God. As a perfect father, unless unless you love everyone my goodness hmm. he who does not love does not know god for god is love okay so i leave the rest for you <laughs> a disciple of god we are talking about the three graces of the holy spirit we have spoken about faith. We've spoken about, about hope. We are in love. And that's John chapter 4 verse 7. If we love God, everything that happens to us will turn out for the good. If we love God, everything, everything that happens to us will turn out for good. Oh, I believe that. I believe that with every fiber of my being. I believe that. I believe that. Go to um, Romans chapter 8. <laughs> if we love God, everything that happens to us will turn out for our good. Don't forget that. If we love God. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Go there with me real quick. Romans chapter 8. Victoria. God bless you. Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. Go with me. Romans the 8th chapter. If you love God, everything that happens to you will turn out for your good. Did you hear that? Hmm. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 28. Vic, God bless you. Romans 8. Look at it. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. <laughs> all things, not some. Beloved, this is why you don't need to worry. Just love God. Just love Him. Just love Him with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Love God. When you love Him, all things will work out for your good. 
You see the understanding of the word of God. This is, listen, I often say this. The Bible is very simple to understand with the, with the Holy Spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit. For you not to understand it, you need the help of the, of this, of, <laughs> you need the help of Satan, of the devil to help you misunderstand the Bible. Are you listening? You need Satan to help you misunderstand the Bible. But it is very simple to understand by the help of the Holy Spirit. And we know it. We know it. Unless you don't know, beloved, unless you don't know this, unless you do not know this, but all things will work out for your good. All things. It doesn't matter how bad it's looking right now. It doesn't matter how bad it's looking. Listen, I have come to the place, I'm not worrying myself about who is concocting what against me. Don't worry yourself. Are you listening? Don't worry. And this one is talking about me. And, and, and they, they want to crucify me. And, and Jesus, listen, Jesus knew that they would crucify him. But yet he kept his eyes on the ball. The finish line, the victory line. Don't take your eyes off. Don't take, listen, I sons and spiritual sons and spiritual daughters you know in my life this is my my they will tell you that this is my my best advice don't take your eyes off the ball don't take your eyes jesus never took his eyes off the ball he even came to the place where he was telling the father father if it is possible let me now go through this because this what i can foresee is too much Nevertheless, nevertheless, for the sake of coming to sit at your right hand side, right side, oh my goodness, this place that nobody has the right to sit, nevertheless, nevertheless, the Holy Spirit was with him. Because remember, when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And there was no time for us to know that the Holy Spirit departed from him. So even when he was going through difficult times, the Holy Spirit was still with him. Remember that. Don't, don't, you know, deception when I hear some people talking about, well, he said he has the Holy Spirit. Why is he going through these challenging times? And who said the Holy Spirit cannot be with you? Because what, listen, all things will work for your good. All things, good, bad, ugly. For your good, not for your destruction. Not for your destruction. This is why I love this scripture. Oh my goodness. Let, let me complete this. I love this scripture. Oh, listen. God, it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 there, verse 6, it says, it's, uh, 7, I believe. It said, no eyes had seen, no ear has, has, heard, has heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. No eye has seen, no ear has heard the things, the things, and listen to this. It says, verse 28 says, all things, we know that all things work together for your good, not for your disgrace, not for your shame. Hallelujah. My, I love this. So, so who cares? Who cares who is smearing your name in the sun? And all this and all that and all this. Who, who cares? If the word of God is what you want to live your life on, beloved, ask Jesus, the one that you are following. When he was ridiculed, when he was lied upon, when he was, he was beaten, when they, they, I mean, have you been lied upon before? Have you? Have you been lied upon before? I have been there. I know. I keep telling, listen, I don't preach, I don't preach or teach out of my head. I am not because you know, God takes care of me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. He loves me enough to take care of me. But if I had to just be in the pulpit to receive money to take care of myself, I guess maybe then I'll be poor. Because it don't hasn't worked for me but somehow some way 
God takes care of me. Beloved, I have to, I have to live on his word. I have to believe it. Irrespective of the, the challenges and the circumstances that I am facing. All things will work together for your good. All things, not some. So let them wish you evil. Let them go to, to the, 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 the darkest, darkest area of their meetings and wish you evil. God's word will... Listen, Jesus said this. All right? And the scripture said from the beginning, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word, the word was with God. And the word was God. Everything will pass away by the word of God. Beloved, you better take the word. You better take the word and live on the word. Sleep on the word. Talk on the word. Believe the word. All things. All things will pass. All things. Look at it. It says, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Watch this now. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Not your purpose. Not your purpose. If, if Joseph had his own purpose, he wouldn't have gone through what he went through. Mm -mm. The purpose of God for Joseph's life was for Joseph to become a prime minister of even another nation. Not, not where he was even born. You don't know yet. That is why it has not entered into the heart of any man or woman the things God has prepared for you who love him. So the Holy Spirit is in you, yet you are going through. Beloved, don't doubt that the Holy Spirit is in you. Don't doubt it. Are you listening? Don't doubt it. Huh. I tell you, Jesus expressed the greatest love known by giving his life that we might be saved. Jesus expressed the greatest, the greatest love. John chapter 15, verse 13. I'm, going to, I'm just going to close here. <laughs> John chapter 15. Go with me to John. Let's go back to Brother John. Let's go back to Brother John and uh, see what John, I love John. John 15, John chapter 15 again, all right? John chapter 15, are you there? John chapter 15, look at verse um, 13. Look at verse 13 of John. Jesus speaking here again, verse 12. Let me take you from verse 12. We'll count to 13. This is my commandment. Jesus is speaking again. That you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is speaking here again. Jesus is speaking. And he continued to say this. Greater love has no one than this. Than to lay down one's life for his friend than to lay down one's life for his friend. Beloved, this is another point where um, I am careful who I call friend. I don't just, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people I just don't make friends. Not just, you know, I mean, I have some few ones that, you know, but um, um, I enjoy my time with, you know, with Joyce. I mean, crack the fool and, you know, let the little boy come out, you know, all the time. And just laugh and, you know, just crack fools. And I, I, I love my company with her. Yes, we do, you know, have some atmosphere sometimes like, man, leave me alone. <laughs> but for the most part, all right? Because, see, the word friend, the word friend, um... I don't take it lightly because of um, some experiences I've had, okay? Not to say that I am not, you know, friendly, 
you know, some of, some of the things, I always say some of the things that Solomon says, I, uh, personally, I don't, it happened, in his dispensation, he understood what he was saying, but not here. <laughs> are you listening to me? Talk about you are not, because if you are not, uh, you don't have friends because you, you are probably not friendly. Who says that? Who says that? Solomon don't even know how much, how much I've tried to be friends with some people and they turn out and stick it to me. <laughs> he don't even know what he's talking about. All right. So to lay down, listen to, and this is, this is, this is Jesus' definition of friend. Jesus. Not what Solomon says. Jesus. Because for you to be able to lay down your life for a friend, my goodness, you, you have some love. You have some love. That is what I call an unquestionable love. Unquestionable love. Remember, 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 Peter, Peter, Peter was with Jesus so close that in and out of Jesus' life, Peter was close. He even verbally told Jesus, I am going to be with you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to depart from you. I, I will be with you. I will die for you. Can you even imagine him saying that? I will die for you. But yet, when the robber met the road, huh? He said, I don't know him. I have never seen him before. Hey! And you say you are my friend? Are you serious? For like the, the young guys would say, for real? A friend. You are laughing with me now. I turn my back and you stick it to me and you say you are a friend. Wow. Is that your definition of friendship? I don't want that. I don't think so. Mm -mm. No. A friend. You can't cover my nakedness and you are calling me a friend. You cannot stand with me in my, in my day of adversity and you say you are my friend. You cannot stand with me. You can't, you can't defend me. I'm going through. Here am I. Where are you? Where are you? Peter, where are you? But Jesus showed him that love. That Peter, irrespective irrespective of all that you did i still love you because you see i understand what love means i understand what love means i do understand you know um one of my my brothers now i'm not saying brothers in the lord or siblings brothers general general <laughs> found himself in a very, very serious trouble or, you know, life-threatening stuff. And I remember that I was in the middle of um, a transaction, a middle of business transaction that will bring, put some thousands of dollars in my pocket that has nothing to do with the church or preaching the gospel in my business. And... Uh, when I, I, I had to leave that transaction to go to his aid, to go to his aid, and um, did all that I had to, left what I had to do to put money in my pocket to go to his aid and help him out. Later down the line, later down the line, <laughs> I felt a knife at my back from this, this source, this brother. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, how do you call this person a brother? How do you call this person even a friend? When you have left everything, to save his life and then stick it to you stick it to you 
there's a story about uh, the the um, 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 oh what do you call this um, scorpion boy my time is gone scorpion <laughs> let me just give you this one a scorpion and um, a horse and there was um, um, a rainstorm all right and uh, you know horses they can cross the, you know water and um, all the animals were crossing and all that but a scorpion was at the at the brink of the water the scorpion is scared the scorpion is really scared because it's like you get in there the scorpion you dead and so the scorpion <clears throat> spoke to um, the horse he says listen horse I know you are tall and you know you can cross this in there listen help me you know that if I get into this water I'm gonna you know I I'm gonna drown and die you don't want to see me dead well the the horse, the nice horse says well yeah I don't want to see you dead so why don't you you know but be careful because you I know I know I know and, and, and I'm telling you be careful because are you I know you I know I know who you are you are a scorpion he says no 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 with this situation here this is life and death I need you to help me so let me just hop you know hop on your back because you when you get in the water okay you will not get in there completely so let me hop on your back and you we, you know we cross together you help me to cross to the other side so that we I don't die in this water the horse says I'm going to do this because I don't want to see you die, dead but be careful you I know you and it's almost like I know this this brother before oh my goodness life so the horse allowed the scorpion to hop on his back and they started crossing they crossed they crossed just before just before they came out of the water the horse felt a sharp like like I just described to you like a knife a sharp pain in its back and he said what is that what is that Scorpion, did you sting me? You know the response of the scorpion? The scorpion says, I have to sting it. I have to, I have to put a venom and kill. And the horse came out, started feeling dizzy because of the venom of the scorpion. Now the horse died. The, the scorpion came out of the back on the ground on the lands of the horse and it lives. Beloved, you talk about love. The horse showed the scorpion love. Yet, let me continue. Verse 13 again of um, John, the 15th chapter, 13. Greater love, greater, not some small love, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. For his friend, greater love. Beloved, this is where I'm going, going to draw the curtains. So Jesus is expressing this to you and I. As to the fact that this is the greater love and this love is in the person of the Holy Spirit the person of the Holy Spirit who dwells with us and in us and so let us let us Jesus says when we demonstrate this love everybody will know that we are the disciples of God we are the disciples. We are the children of God. So, in order not to give anybody, the outsiders, the unbelievers, the, the sons and daughters of the spirit of error, to question our position that we claim we have, or we are, let us love. 
one another as Christ loved us and gave his life, <laughs> life for us. If you don't know who this Christ Jesus is, you have to know him so that his love will come into your heart, into your life. You have to know him. I am tired, like somebody saying, I'm tired of hating. You know, I was sharing with Joyce the other day. I said, every now and then, I said, I've never seen, I guess maybe since Jesus, I've never seen somebody who, who is so hated by people. I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime. I mean, people, hey, this is here. You know, so hate, it, I mean, hate is something that, it's it's very diabolical very very it's it's demonic very demonic is demonic very demonic demonic you need the love of Jesus and if you and for you to have that you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior let me pray with you right now and you know you know that is right so you need the love you need to love again maybe maybe you have you have you stop loving Maybe you stop loving. Well, it's because you stop trusting in Jesus. So you have to love again. You have to love again. I have to love again. <laughs> oh, in my relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to love again. I have to, why? Because I love God. I love God. And His love is His love is in me. And so you cannot love, you cannot say you cannot love when the love of God is in you. You can't. No, it's, it's not true. No, you have to love. Are you listening? So I'm loving again and, uh, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Let me lead you and pray with you right now. You need Jesus so that his love will come into your life. All right? Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that I've heard this message. I need your love in me. And so I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Take full control of my life, Jesus. And live in me. Let your spirit live in me. So that I will, I will feel love and not hate. To my fellow believers. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For coming into my life i receive you now i receive you as my lord and savior and i thank you baptize me in the holy spirit also in jesus your name i pray amen if you pray that prayer beloved if you just pray that prayer i want you to know that listen by faith you have received jesus as your lord and savior you have received him all right you need to take the next step by getting yourself a Bible. If you don't have one, get a new King James or King James or the Amplifier. The one that you can understand the simplicity of the Word of God. Okay. Also, if you are not um, 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 a member of any Bible teaching, believing church, find yourself one in your geographic location where you live and uh, plug yourself in. Introduce yourself to the leadership. Let them know you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are born again and um, you want to grow. In the meantime, please join me this and every um, every day, Monday through Friday, uh, 10, Eastern, uh, 9, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Um, okay. And I believe it's 2 p.m. Um, you know, West Coast of um, Africa. Uh, you can, those of you in Africa, you can join me to study the Word of God, even as I bring you faith moments. My name is Patrick Quino. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, turn on your, your Facebook notification button on so that you can, you can know that um, I'm back on with a short message for you, hopefully this weekend. All right? In the meantime, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need, go to my website. Go to my website. Very important to get more information. Go to the website www.patrickquino.com 
ministries.com and um, um, just you know plug yourself in there get there's, there are certain things different things that you can you can do also yes we do receive donations yes to help spread the gospel uh, we are still even receiving donation to actually get the um, the um, that bigger software and equipment we've been talking about uh, so still do your best whatever you can all right God bless you enjoy your weekend I want you to know you don't have no trouble all you need is your faith in God and in all thy getting get understanding